Hello and welcome to Inside City Limits. I'm Juliana Hendricks. We had the chance to check out some local talent at the auditions for Beach Blanket Babylon at Club Fugazi. It looks like the most fun performance to be in. Because I want to sing, I want to dance, I want to prance, I want to have fun. I'm looking for exposure and uh, I think it will be a great uh, learning experience. I need a job. I mean, I like being an attorney, but an actor, attorney, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> It's like a steady job for an actor, what can I say? They give you money. <laughs> we look for people who've got that crazy beach blanket spirit when we do these shows because uh, you gotta have a certain crazy perspective on the world to uh, be in beach blanket. You know, it's that uh, share but not really share. It's, uh, you know, share singing a ballad instead of share singing, you know, her up temper rock and roll. It's that kind of crazy. <laughs> Do you do any share impressions? I like the man. Yeah. Uh, what I'd like you to do is, could you let your hair down? I don't think you have a problem with that. Well, what Steve does is he lets people get the first, you know, few bars of their song out. If he sees that spark inside of them, then he's liable to ask them to do it like a drunk, like they're sleepwalking, like they're walking on the moon, like they're uh, some character, some pop character, to see if they've got that, you know, kind of creative flair that makes it uh, possible to do Beach Blanket. And uh, that's that sort of insane sort of San Francisco thing. Do you know Megan Whoopi? I do. I think I have to face this way down
That's what we're looking for, is that indefinable spark that you can only see when they're up there on the stage doing it. And of course, they got to have voices that'll knock your socks off. Do you do any characterizations? Um, I speak French, you know. Yeah, what else? I, I'm, let's see, Edith Piaf, I can do Snow White, Dorothy. Um, um, who, who would you like to hear? Whoever you can do. Auditions are a lot of fun because Steve is just there to basically have a good time and people have to be able to have a good time to be in Beach Blanket because it's about bringing energy and fun and excitement in an hour and a half flat out for people, lots of singing and dancing and if they've got that kind of energy, uh, we get to see it then in the audition process so that's what the auditions are like. Okay, now what characters do you do? I can't hear you unless I do an impersonation of Carmen Miranda. Uh -huh. uh, what else do you do? Uh, what else do I do? Um, I do uh, Johnny Mathis. Um, why don't you do Carmen Miranda doing Chances Are? <laughs> chances are that you wear that wait, wait, wait. on stage now. I don't care who you are, just get up there. Come on, girls. Yeah. That's okay. No, no, no. You, you, you'll be fine. Can I ask you what that white thing is you just... Oh, well, we'll save it for later. Yeah. Okay, I want you to sing, and I want the girls to attack you. Uh, respect his limits. And, um, <laughs> okay. No harassment here. Okay. That's too much of a line. Let's get into him, kids. All right. Oh. I can tell you're not shy. Okay. Let's do it. I want to see you just kind of get sexy, okay? Let's give them encouragement here, huh?
It's that sort of insane sort of San Francisco thing. <laughs> when I was younger, just a bad little kid, my mama noticed funny things I did, like shooting puppies with a BB gun. I'd poison guppies, and when I was done, I'd find a pussycat and smash in his head. That's when my mama said, Look at me, I'm as helpless as a kitten up a tree. <laughs> Let me swallow this lozenge, okay? Sure. Okay. What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why, it's almost like being in love. And then I'm going to like kind of jazz up um, Don't Cry For Me Argentina by going, I had to let it happen. I had to change. Good night, spin all my life, though not year. Looking out of the window, staying out of the sun. So I chose freedom, running around trying everything new. But nothing could thrill me at all. I never expected it to. I always knew I was going to be an overnight rock star, but I just didn't know which night. We'll be back with more of Inside City Limits. Next up, historical briefs on fire. History books tell us that San Francisco was destroyed by fire seven times, and it almost happened again in 1989 during the Marina Fire. Most of the fires were in the 1850s, but the 1906 earthquake caused the most destructive blaze in the nation's history. We call it the Great Fire, and it burned for three days and three nights. When it was all over, almost 500 square blocks of San Francisco had been destroyed. Exhausted San Francisco firefighters pumped water from the bay to save structures around the ferry building, and dynamite was used in other places. In the Mission District, people used mops and blankets to smother the fire. Almost all the fires began in collapsed buildings, and the same thing happened in 1989 during the Marina Fire. The building at Beach and Divisadero fell with the earthquake, but did not catch fire. Rescuers went into the fallen apartment, and when the first aftershock happened, fire broke out in the rubble. This is where the Marina Fire began. It's not one of the biggest fires in history, but it was seen by millions of people on television. But the Great Fire of 1906 is still the greatest fire to hit San Francisco. Most people don't know that the majority of fires in 1906 broke out in collapsed wood frame buildings and then spread to the downtown area. The damage was so great that it ruined the economy of California and was partly to blame for the national money panic of 1907. Insurance experts say that San Francisco will have major fires again when the next earthquake strikes. I'm Gladys Hansen, archivist for the Museum of the City of San Francisco, and see you next week. If you're an apartment dweller and would still like to own a pet, take a look at this from the Animal Care and Control Services. Many people live in San Francisco with very little space for a dog or a cat sometimes. Sometimes their lifestyle prevents them from giving a lot of attention to uh, a cat or a dog. So in that case, and if they still want an animal in their lives, we have wonderful alternative pets to choose from. We have birds, we have rabbits, we have hamsters, rats, mice, um, and guinea pigs. They're all very easy to learn how to take care of, and they can all be very um, good friends, too. They can bond with you just as strongly as a cat or a dog, in many cases, not in all cases, um, but they can be a, a real pleasure to have. They don't need as much space. You can have a studio apartment and have a very, very happy little rat or bird or hamster or guinea pig. So in that sense, the, the animal can be quite happy in a very small space. I would like to introduce everyone to Ricky. Ricky came to us with his two sisters several months ago. The two sisters were pregnant. Between them, they had 22 beautiful children, and we placed all 22 in loving good homes. Very proud of that. 
Now Ricky is neutered and he is actually the pet of the director of our shelter. Uh, Ricky's just one wonderful example of a, an alternative pet. And Ricky happens to be a rat. Many people would not consider a rat for a pet. They're very affectionate. They bond with their owners like crazy. And um, the most wonderful part about having an alternative pet is really the relationship. It's a, it's a relationship that is very special because they're so little. If you're curious about any of the animals we've talked about, just come on down to the Department of Animal Care and Control, and we'll be glad to give you all the information you need to make the right choice for you. If you have any more questions about alternative pets, please feel free to call Melissa Flower at the Animal Care and Control Services on Harrison Street. Andre Valentine went down to the hate and ended up at ground zero and had this talk with Jay Johnson. How long have you uh, been in business here? Uh, six years. Okay, and what did you... <laughs> What did you uh, do before that? Uh, well, a bunch of different stuff, you know. But uh, I always wanted to open a cafe. I moved into the neighborhood, and most of these storefronts were all uh, boarded up, mm -hmm. and the neighborhood was going to decline. And so it was kind of an opportunity. And uh, there was no place to have coffee mm -hmm. around here, so I thought it would be a good chance to open a cafe and on a shoestring budget, because I didn't have much money. And, uh, Six years later, here I am. And Tell us about your place. How did you, how did you come up with the, the, the decorations, the motif, and the uh, name well, and everything? Well, uh, kind of fit the style of the outside of the building. Uh, I was an uh, antique dealer, and so I'm kind of interested in that uh, um, historical things and uh, design. And uh, it was 1985. It was the uh, anniversary of uh, the uh, bombing on Hiroshima. So. That kind of was, you know, we were throwing out names on one night and we were trying to think of a name. I think a name's very important for any business. And um, Ground Zero came to mind. And of course, 985 was kind of like, you know, a lot of, um, this neighborhood was kind of like a punk neighborhood, I guess. There's a lot of artists and stuff, so I thought that was perfect. Tell us about some of the things that you served your customers. Uh, basically, this is just a co coffee bar. Uh, like a lot of cafes, it's basically a restaurant. They call it a cafe. This is actually a cafe. I noticed uh, you've installed a, um, a computer network system over here, San Francisco. Uh, yeah, this, this guy just started that, um, and he's put it in different cafes. And it seems to be kind of popular. It's like a new, new, new uh, toy, I guess. What's it all about? It? But, um, basically, they just talk to one another on the, from the different. They communicate through the keyboard. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't use it. So people in, in computer illiterate. So I, people in, in in this this cafe can talk talk to, to another cafe wherever they have, uh, and I guess also they offer information. So, so how can we? It's how, a good idea. It could it could you know? If they had more information, I think it'd be good. If they had, you know, entertainment listings or stuff like that. But. Okay, they're so working on that. It's just brand new. I understand this, this isn't your, your only place. I understand you. Uh, just... Yeah, I just opened another one now. Um, it's called the Orbit Room uh, Market in Laguna. Future plans for, for this place? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, in fact, I, I need to uh, probably close it down in January. And do some, some remodeling and stuff. I've learned a lot. In, in, uh, this is my first place, first cafe, and I didn't even drink coffee when I, when I opened it. But now I'm really an expert uh, at <laughs> the cappuccino machine. Uh, Bay Guardian voted us uh, best latte readers poll this year. And readers uh, know about that. <laughs> ground Zero, 783 Hayes <laughs> Okay, Ground Zero, 783. Okay. You know, Jay has really done a great job with this place. As a matter of fact, this is what it used to look like. Quite a metamorphosis, I'd say. The Ground Zero is a great place to have a cup of coffee. You can socialize or you can just read. They have all the reading material you could ever want. It's located on Hayton Scott Street. It's open from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. So why don't you come on down and join them? For Inside City Limits, I'm Andre Valentine. We'll be back with more of Inside City Limits.
next up, Andre Valentine with People on the Street. When you guys go out to eat, where do you like to, what restaurant do you guys like to go to? Uh, for breakfast, we like the First Watch down on Lombard Street. Mm -hmm. It's great. Oh, Polly's. Polly's. Yeah. I think our favorite restaurant is a little French one we found on Geary called Le Bergeret. I like Garibaldi's on Presidio. Where are you guys on your way to? Oh, we're going down to uh, Hot and Hunky and have a hamburger. Any place else? Um, the Cypress Club to go out and drink. We like uh, the pizza restaurant, um, North, Beach. North Beach Pizza. I think one of my favorite restaurants is the Tonga Room in the Fairmont Hotel. Um, I like the Flying Saucer uh, in 22nd and Guerrero. There are so many that sometimes it's pretty hard to make a uh, you know, a proper decisions. Mm -hmm. You're kind of puzzled with such a big variety of what is available and uh, mm, what is there. One of my favorite restaurants is the Grotto. Um, um, other than that, I like to go up on Haight and eat at Zona Rosa. That's probably one of my favorites. Um, how about dinner? What do we like for dinner, you guys? Embarco. Embarco's good. Embarco is very good. Oh, <laughs> they, they like everything. No. <laughs> we like to eat. <laughs> we love to eat. Okay. Definitely. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for checking us out, and we'll see you next week on Inside City Limits.